Uh, we also got a new WWE trademark filing. I saw this and laughed. So I think this is like the kind of idea I would come up with, but you know, if I actually ran a company, I would never do it. WWE applied to trademark Tala Tonga. Say all of the names fast. Tala Tonga. Tala. Because they have signed Hikaleo, who is tall. He is. He is going to be Tala Tonga. Tala. Tala. So we'll have Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, and Tala Tonga. Good luck, Pat McAfee. Uh, what are we Actually, doing he here? He doesn't have to worry about that. They're they should have the kept it. Brand. They should have kept it Tanga Loa. I don't know why they had to change it. Tala Tonga is just preposterous. I mean, he is tall. But, yeah, it looks like the bloodline continues to grow. Hopefully this, like, all works out. See, I was watching that uh, WCW special, and, you know, they were talking about how, how many people do we need in this NWO? Just keeps expanding. Remember that? They yes. had, like, you know, who's the third man? It was Hulk Hogan. It was gigantic. And then, you know, they had a couple of other people, and then... It stopped, it stopped being good at Pretty sense. soon, you've got 55 members of the NWO, and you've got the LWO, and you've got the... NWO Wolf Pack and black and white, red and, and this black. and that, and I mean the bloodline was the biggest storyline I think they've ever done. If you look at just pure revenue, if you look at pure revenue and money drawn, the bloodline storyline is the biggest storyline they've ever promoted. Well, now we've got more bloodline. We've got Tala Tonga coming in. That that feels the name feels like it's jumping the shark, but well. the difference is we don't have Eric Bischoff writing this. We have we have Paul Heyman. And so I have I have confidence that he has a plan. And hopefully it follows through and is very successful for old Tala Tonga. Taula. Tala. Not Taula. Taula. Are you sure? T A L L A. Tala. It's not gonna be pronounced Taula though, or something like that. Well, if it was, maybe they'd spell it differently. Okay. It's Tala Tonga. Okay. Is Haku slash Mang going to be going back to the name King Tonga when he finally appears on screen? Because that's what it was for a long time. We'll see if he ever ends up on screen. He should. I hope he they need does to have, better. Remember they were going to have that, uh, that uh, yeah. like, the Bloodline Elders something or other they were going to do once. Oh, but then the round table or people whatever. People weren't yeah, feeling the, well, and so they yeah. didn't make it or whatever. Yeah, we were coming to the table. The Bloodline yeah. Summit was what they were yes. going to do, and it didn't work out because of health issues. Well, uh, you know, Haku seems pretty healthy to me. Hey, look, he's got to make an appearance. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how they end up ultimately at the end of the day splitting these teams up. And if way down the line, you know, at some point, Solo Sokoa has got to go back to the other side there. And then you got Roman and Solo and then both Uso brothers against the rock this outsider with his outside tongans his history of tradition with 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 the great mighty haku at his side going to battle against roman and all his crew no the story that here i mean the, the story they're telling is that I'm these, jumping ahead, though. these new these new bloodline members literally this is the word they use which i'm, I'm actually kind of surprised they use this in 2024 they're Dogs. savages well that's what they're calling them savages they're no. untrained savages Okay. Well, I think they're they're very well trained. And no, that's they're what they just... say. Literally in commentary, they say they they are untrained savages. Even though one of them trained in developmental for years. But anyway, they're untrained savages is is the uh, is the storyline. Well, if here. if that's the case well, for old Tala, what does that make uh what does that make Jacob You're, Fatu you're getting ahead in? of me here. So you you need to have the bloodline split. So that you've got Paul Heyman, Roman Reigns, you know, the, the actual, the, the original trained bloodline against the savage bloodline managed by Meng. Out for bloodline. Haku. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back here on the show, Ryan Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Yes. So, you know, people are pointing out that, uh, you know, Hikaleo's middle name is Taula, T-A-U-L-A. Which we talked about. So now these people on Twitter are like, "It's his middle name. It's not about how tall he is." Well, why didn't they spell it T A U L A then? Well, maybe they forgot to put an accent mark in the uh, the social media. They post spelled or it T A L L A. So yes, obviously it also has to do with how tall he is. Well, you know. And don't say they got to change his name because they didn't change Tomatonga's name. Well, it's a cool name. They did change Tongaloa's name, yeah, which actually of. was a mistake. Yeah, well, 
Yes. Hikaleo just what's wrong with Hikaleo? I guess it's not very I like uh, Hikaleo. Yeah, I mean so do I, but I guess it's not a mighty name. It doesn't have enough sharpness to it to, for merchandising purposes. And then we've got uh Masse and Monsois are heading to collision. Really? Yeah. I'd actually heard about uh I forget which one I heard about. I think it was Mansois. Somebody had brought it up to me uh might have even been last week. He might have been backstage for a couple of shows. But yes, huh. Massey and Mensois are uh, heading to collision. Do you think they need a new Maxine Dupree at their side? You know what I don't think they need any of is more people. <laughs> I I think we've kind of hit the limit of the number of people needed in AEW. Well, I think we have more than enough to last a long, long time. Well, maybe they're just making an appearance for cash purposes because I know they've been. I don't know able if they've signed. Get... I just know they're going to. Well, yeah, it. they've been able to get some good work on the indies. They've wrestled for GCW as well as a couple of other places, working the gimmick. So. And then uh, we got Blood and Guts coming up. They actually announced on Dynamite a match that is coming up in July. Late July. Blood and Guts is coming up. July 25th, Dynamite in Nashville, and it will be the Elite and a partner against Team AEW, whoever that's going to be. And uh, An Elite plus one, eh? Yeah. When was Blood and Guts last year? July? Might have to look it up. Not sure. I don't know. I don't know about... It. Listen... It's it's uh, it's kind of this is one of those deals, you know. People, well, you say this and then you say this. Yeah, you're right because every situation is different. I like that they're announcing things far, far in advance. But announcing a blood and guts match, gimmick match for six weeks from now, where now we have to build towards who's in it. Takes out some of the danger and drama. Well, it's like, uh, okay, you know, every year Hell in a Cell is on such and such a date. We just got to, you know, make something up for it. To me, Blood and Guts should be, okay, well, when do we have a blood feud that needs to be settled in Blood and Guts? Yeah. Not, okay, well, Blood and Guts is going to be every July, and then... That's the same thing WWE did with Hell in a Cell. And it, it just kind of made the, it just made it another match. Just another what match they, on another show. What are they fighting for? And by the way, Well, we don't July. know because now they have to shoot the angle after they already announced the match. Well, I got one for you. In the stadium stampede, what were they fighting for? They were fighting for supremacy, Mike. Ah. Uh, yes. Got it. I like it better when the match is there because it's needed at that time. Yeah. And not it is the time of year for that match. And so let's make a match that will fit Go, into that time of year. Goes for all promotions, although with WWE, you're never going to be able to put that toothpaste back in the tube. But not everyone has to be exactly like them. And you can pull out your War Games slash Blood and Guts match when you're ready for it. You know, if you wanted to continue on with these guys being animals and, you know, being controlling and messing with the locker room and Tony Khan and all that sort of stuff. Okay, fine. But like build up to a reason for it. Okay. Yeah. They, they broke Eddie Kingston's leg. Now maybe, I don't know, put in action and ready in a neck brace, leave a trail of bodies, which leads up to AEW wanting revenge against these guys. You know, I, I just, I don't know. It's, well, it's... we had, we had, we had anarchy in the arena, which was not stadium stampede. It was anarchy in the arena. Anarchy in the arena. I'm sorry. We had anarchy in the arena which the Elite won to lead to the Elite challenging for blood and guts. Shouldn't it be the other way yeah. around? Yeah, that's This whole thing is, look, it's, and I get it. I know what they wanted to play off of, but they have not dotted I's and crossed T's, and people will complain about us pointing that out. But it's a fact. It's true. And there's too much of that. It's, you know, how could Brian go on a rant about Christopher Daniels standing there looking impotent while Tony Khan was a bobblehead doll? Because it points out a big logic flaw in what you're trying to tell about this story. Otherwise, it's the Muppet Show. It's a variety show. You never know what's going to happen backstage when Scooter is arguing with Kermit and what, you know, box of chickens may fly by or something like that, chased by Bunsen Honeydew. That's what AEW feels like 
too often and it doesn't have to be that way it's just a matter of tightening things up and having things correctly lead to other things thank you for watching make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again